Hi, my name is Christy Lozano, and I'm a teacher in the Santa Barbara Unified School District here in Santa Barbara, California. I have been teaching for the school district for 18 years. I taught nine years of high school at San Marcos and Dos Pueblos High School. I taught four years junior high at La Cumbre Junior High and Santa Barbara Junior High. And I taught six years elementary, which was my favorite, at McKinley and Cleveland Elementary Schools. I love learning, I love teaching, and I'm a lifelong learner. I started out getting my bachelor's degree of science in kinesiology at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. I went back to school in 2017 to Cal Lutheran University, and I got my master's of educational leadership and my preliminary service administrative credential, which I would love to be a principal one day. I am a certificated personal trainer. I have been a head soccer coach at San Marcos and coached many different sports. Along the way, I have a certification in health. And so I have a very good understanding of the Santa Barbara Unified School District. I love teaching there. It is my passion. And I wanna tell you what's going on today. you what's going on. I also want to say that I'm a veteran of the United States Air Force. I served six years in the Air National Guard. I was deployed in 2001 in response to the 9-11 emergency at LAX Airport. I stood guard over there at the airport and our mission was to instill safety in the flying public. I also was deployed overseas to support Operation Iraqi Freedom in 2003. We were an aeromedical evacuation squadron that supplied medical aid to troops in Afghanistan and Iraq. I am also an ordained minister and I hold an advanced diploma of ministry. I would love to be a chaplain one day. I think that'd be awesome. And my heart has always been to help people and to heal people. I want to tell you why I'm a teacher and why I'm talking to you today. My purpose as a teacher is to create colorblind camaraderie, a sense of purpose for kids and people in the community, and a sense of confidence so that kids can go out and do the things that they were created to do. I believe that all of my training aligns well with my passion for teaching kids and I'm known as Coach Christie. I am a team builder. I'm a community builder. I'm a teacher that loves to build kids up. I love to spot their gifts and abilities to cause them to grow. I need to instill security in kids so that they feel safe in my classroom. I use love and discipline to uh, help the kids to flourish in a safe environment. And as teachers, we need to work with parents and with community because it takes a village to raise a kid. And we need to work in unity with all the members of the community. The reason that I'm making this video today is because I want to show you what's being concealed from the parents in the Santa Barbara Unified School District. There's something called the culturally responsive curriculum. It is curriculum and materials that are on the Santa Barbara Unified website behind a teacher password protected portal not accessible to parents and community. Teachers are trained with it every month. Parents don't really know what's going on and they need to know what's going on. Teachers are expected to teach it in their classrooms and it ranges from preschool all the way to 12th grade and parents don't have access to these materials. The curriculum demonizes people it's destructive, it teaches toxic ideology, it's terrible philosophy to foist on teachers and children, it's cruel, misguided, counterproductive, radically political, divisive, and abusive. For a teacher who is committed to being a positive force in the Santa Barbara Unified District and invested in team building and confidence lifting, 
This curriculum does the opposite. This curriculum brings negativity. It's not going to build confidence, security, love, trust, teamwork, unity, and all the elements that are, are, that are needed to educate our kids. Let me walk you through it. Here we are, it's January 15th, 2022 at 12.48 p.m. And we are here on the Santa Barbara Unified School District webpage. If you look up at the top, it shows staff resources, which is a password protected portal that I have to log into in order to gain access. Once here, I go under teaching and learning instructional guidance and resources for teachers. Down, scrolling down, we go to the culturally responsive curriculum that I've been speaking about. Once here, you can scan down the page. It starts with self, talks about meta. There's uh, a month that each month is dedicated, uh, a people group, Black Lives Matter, uh, Hispanic Latinx Heritage, LBGTQIA. Uh, all throughout the year, teachers undergo these trainings. If you start with self, there's a tab called specifically for white folks. Under this tab, there's a bunch of links. And if you click on a link, you can read about what white colleagues need to understand. White supremacy doesn't stop at the teacher's lounge door. You scroll down, what's expected from educators of color. Educators of color are being driven out. How white colleagues can do better. White educators can work to manage white fragility in themselves among colleagues. The next link is a Vox website, how to be a good white ally according to activists. I would imagine if you mention ally, that must mean they're enemies at the moment. Um, this is talks about um, white, what white person's job is at a protest and what it isn't. It says that their job is to do, quote, everything in their power to put their bodies between the body of black people and police. Here on this third link, we have Paul Kivel, who gives guidelines for being a strong white ally and what people of color want from white allies. He says the basic tactics are assume racism is everywhere every day. Notice who is at the center of attention and who's at the center of power. That's what he's talking about. Uh, we have how to talk to white folks about race. Next link says 75 things white people can do, but when you go there, it actually is 105 things white people can do for racial justice. White people do something. It's basically defunding the police and a new smarter approach to public safety. It says to donate to BLM, make small crimes legal, do not support prisons, and reduce prison sentences, and lots of information like that. And lastly, we have curriculum for white Americans to educate themselves on race and racism. Talks about Malcolm X, uh, police killing one group at a staggering rate, and there's a lot of work that remains. If we back out of this and we go back out to the curriculum, you can scroll down. We can look at Black Lives Matter, uh, Week of Action. And if you look here, it starts with self, gives a bunch of links. Uh, it has preschool lessons to second grade, third to sixth grade, and secondary resources. Black Lives Matter at school. Uh, lots of information here that they are teaching to your children. You scroll down a little bit. We, are, we can celebrate the LGBTQIA Pride Month here where you start with self, lots of lessons and, and information for teachers, uh, community connections, who we can reach out to in the community, and then all grades, general lessons and resources, pr teaching on pronouns, the gender unicorn, uh, inclusive curriculum lessons, there's collections, the LGBTQ heritage, gender inclusive biology, 
educate and celebrate. There's activism, the Youth Advocate Toolkit, teaching kids how to advocate for themselves in these arenas. 12 uh, historic LGBTQ figures who changed the world. We have the LGBTQ History Month with all sorts of lessons. You can look any of these up. And there's preschool, grade school, and secondary resources, seven books. And there's lots of text and videos to be shown to your children while in class. In my opinion, there are several problems with the curriculum and the materials. Number one, it's password protected and it's not accessible to parents and community. It needs to be. Number two, some of it is politically charged. BLM is sponsored by a political organization and politics do not belong in the classroom, especially at the younger levels. Number three, many of the links are cruel, personally demeaning and abusive. It speaks of being an ally, and if they use the term ally, then they must believe at the moment that there are enemies. Enemies in the school district? How do you feel about that? I have never seen myself as an enemy. That makes me very sad because my heart has always been to help people and help kids. Being an ordained minister, I have always believed in healing and restoration. Using restorative approaches in the district it has given me a platform to help teach this process to children. I teach forgiveness, taking responsibility, kindness, empathy, consideration. The only time past grievances should be brought up are for the purpose of healing the relationships. What this curriculum and those that are teaching it teaches is hatred, division, blame and shame. And in my opinion, it's very evil and dangerous for our children. So, so many people have left the district. They have been forced to retire. They have gone on mental leaves of absence or leaves of absence because they cannot tolerate the dysfunctional culture and toxic ideologies that they're required to teach. Good staff and teachers have quit. Just as an example, at McKinley alone at the end of 2020, about 20 staff and teachers out of about 27 left McKinley School. I chose to stay at McKinley School. McKinley School has a majority of homelessness, children living in cars or shelters, DACA kids, foster youth. They are the most vulnerable of the district. They are kids that struggle with insecurity, food insecurity, abandonment, and they have been let down by many adults. I promised the students that I was gonna stay at McKinley and be there after all the changes in personnel so that I could be a constant for them. I had been at McKinley for six years. I had helped raise those kids and they loved and trusted me. I was transferred out and not told about that until a week after the school year ended and I did not want to be transferred out. I was heartbroken. I'm positive that the kids were heartbroken because I didn't get to tell them goodbye. I met with district administration and I asked for the ability to go back to McKinley and tell the kids goodbye and I was denied the opportunity. I did a lot of good work with those kids and they didn't understand why I left. I'm sure they believed I abandoned them because I know that's their filter. Along with many of the McKinley teachers, they wanted to leave, but I knew that the children needed me and my goal is to get back to them. My transfer is just one of the many examples of this toxic culture and it is what I believe is gross mismanagement and bad policy set forth by the school board and the district office administration. While this is my opinion, I believe I speak for many teachers and many families because they have experienced similar things. The school I was transferred to, which is Dos Pueblos High School, is a wonderful school, but the demographic is the exact opposite of where I've been and, and what I've been teaching, the kids I've been teaching. It's not really where I believe I'm truly needed. However, I understand it was an administrative decision but I believe the school district is on a terrible tra trajectory. If it was a soccer game, I would say that board members and district administration are causing us to clearly kick the ball down the wrong end of the field. My goal right now is to coach parents and the community in what I believe they need to do to help fix the problem in the Santa Barbara Unified School District. 
Number one, there needs to be transparency. We should only have board members and superintendents that are willing to be transparent because transparency builds trust. And with trust, they partner with all parents, not just friends and special interest groups. The password protection needs to come off the portal and the materials need to be made available to the parents and community to view on their own from the front page of the district website. The district talks a lot about being inclusive and hiding this material is not inclusive. Number two, I believe some of this material is grooming and grooming is not okay. When did it suddenly become okay? Material that is radical in nature needs to be taken off and not taught. It is destructive to children. The entire district holds a high moral and ethical responsibility to steward children well. Children are a gift from God and we need to take care of them and do our best. Number three, no one should have to apologize for the color of their skin. No one. No one should be singled out and demonized for who they are or how God made them. This is demeaning and it's abusive. And number four, all of these materials should be available in English and Spanish. In Santa Barbara, we have a high Latino population, so they need to be available in Spanish for everybody to read. Thank you for taking the time to listen to what's happening in the Santa Barbara Unified School District. I'm sure if it's happening here, it's happening everywhere. Please take the time to get involved. Be curious about what your children are learning. Investigate the curriculum and materials, especially if they're hidden materials like I talked about today, so that we can reverse this course and protect our kids and have a bright future.